Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy God, we come before you with reverence and awe. Mindful of the great privilege, Father God, that it is to study your word. We ask that you will reveal yourself, Father God, to us through the pages, through the pages of your scriptures. Father God, help us to understand your character and your will for our lives. May your word take root in our hearts and bear fruit that will last. Will last and last and last. We thank you, Father God, for today and each and every day. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on in, come on in. We are on 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4. And I pray that you had some time. Those of you who are here, were were here before. I pray that you had some time to um, go ahead and read 1 Peter chapter 4. And then I'll summarize it in the end. We'll read it now, word for word. Word. I thank you all for tuning in, those of you who have been following along, and those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, come on in. We do this every Tuesday and every Thursday, 12 o'clock or so Eastern Standard Time, and whatever platform you're listening on, you're welcome to drop me a line to say hello, any prayer, or anything that you need. Um, feel free to contact me. So now we're going to begin reading 1 Peter chapter 4, um, KJV, if you have your Bibles open, that's great, if you don't, just go ahead and listen in, all right, first one here says, for as much then as Christ have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. Verse 2. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked lavishness when we walked in lavishness lust excessive wine revelings banquetings banquetings and abominable abominable idolatries wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. For, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. Verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. 
but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Verse 19 and last verse. Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Now, hallelujah, very good words here Peter gave. Now what does all of it mean? We're going to do a little summary here. Okay, First Peter chapter 4, it begins with Peter encouraging, encouraging the believers to live for the rest of their time in the flesh and not, not for human passions, but for the will of God, but for the will of God, live for the will of God. Um, he reminds them that they have already spent enough time living in the way of the Gentiles, and he urges them to be prepared for the end of all things which is at hand. And all of this goes for us as well. Peter then goes on to exhort them to love one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. He encourages the use of spiritual gifts to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. He reminds the people of God that if anyone speaks, they should speak as one who speaks the oracles of God. Hallelujah. If anyone serves, they should serve with the strength that God supplies, so that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, Peter also prepares them for the possibility of suffering, reminding them that Christ, Christ suffered in the flesh, and therefore they should arm themselves with the same way of thinking. He urges them not to be surprised at the fiery trial that has come upon them, but to rejoice in so far as to share, as they share Christ's sufferings knowing that they will also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Now right here, Peter concludes the chapter by emphasizing the importance of judgment, beginning with the household of God and reminding his readers that if the righteous are scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? He encourages them to entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. All right, that is the summary of 1 Peter chapter 4. And again, we have to, we have to stay on it. Right here again, it, it, um, it, 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 it just says if the righteous are scarcely saved, what will become the, of the ungodly 
and the sinner. We know that the path is wide open. The salvation path is wide open for the sinners. But for those who are coming on the path of righteousness to be saved, we know that that path is narrow. And many, many people are not going to make it. So let's hold fast that we know that we are in the end times. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to pray to God. Let's stay close to God and read the scriptures. Read them, read them, read them. Continue to stay in prayer. Hallelujah. Because we don't want to be behind. We want to go through that straight and narrow gate. We don't want to be in the one that's wide open. We want to be there. Be there in the kingdom. We want to be raptured up with Jesus Christ. Amen. We all want to be saved. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ if you have not. Just ask him to come into your life right now as your Lord and Savior. Admit and know that he is the Son of God. That you are a sinner and you are ready to walk in his ways. To walk with him. And come on into the kingdom of God and serve him. Hallelujah. I encourage you to read Romans 10 verses 9 through 10. Who talks, well, it talks about salvation. And I pray that everyone here is saved. Hallelujah. Ask Jesus right now to come into your life as your Lord and Savior and let him know that you'll serve him throughout all eternity for the rest of your life. Acknowledge him as you knowing that he is the Son of God. Amen. No cookie cutter thing to say. But be saved and come on in and get your name on the books of life. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. We end now with a prayer. Lord God Almighty, we lift up our hearts in gratitude for the privilege of studying your word together right here. We pray that you would help us, Father God, to continue growing, growing in our knowledge of you and your ways, knowing more and more about you, Father God. May the seeds that have been planted in our hearts, Father God, during this reading of your word, May they bear much fruit in our lives and in the lives of those around us. We honor you today and each and every day. Father God, we give you glory, all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, this is going to do it. This is going to do it. Come on back for more every Tuesday, every Thursday, 12 o'clock or so Eastern Standard Time. Whatever platform you're on, you are welcome. If you're on YouTube, go ahead, like, subscribe, share. It helps to just keep the word going and going and reach more people. I thank you all for tuning in, and I, I just, just enjoy my time here, and I hope and pray that you enjoyed your time as well. Um, so come on back. Continue to come on back. I enjoy you. Feel free to always be open and drop me a line wherever you're at. Any questions, comments, or concerns that you may have, any prayer requests, submit them. Submit them. So have a wonderful day, afternoon, or midnight, wherever you're at in the world and whatever time you're listening here. Enjoy yourselves and stay safe. I love you all. And as I always say at the end of everything, Every podcast, every YouTube video, right here, right here on the Blessings Ministry, go in peace.